Hey everyone, so by far the most powerful ability in One Piece is Advanced Conqueror's Haki. This single ability took Luffy from clashing evenly with Bolti to splitting the sky with Kaido. It was the difference between Zoro being helpless against King to completely overwhelming him. This ability seems to be a staple among the Yonko, and one of the primary reasons why they are so far beyond most other characters. And it's the reason why for so long, splitting the sky was considered the customary Yonko greeting, as it signified them being at the absolute top of the pirate world. Note, I'm not saying that only characters with advanced conquerors hockey can be extremely strong. We have a lot of characters that are not confirmed to even have regular conquerors hockey, who we understand to be extremely, extremely strong. For example, we know that Garp was comparable to the likes of Gold Roger even without Garp being a confirmed Conqueror's Hockey user. However, my point is that Advanced Conqueror's Hockey is, in isolation, in a vacuum, the single most powerful ability one can have in the series. And so far, the only confirmed users that we have are Luffy, Zoro, Roger, Whitebeard, Shanks, Kaido, Big Mom, Odin, and Yamato. Reminder that characters clashing with black lightning effects does not mean advanced Conqueror's Hockey on its own. That effect just happens anytime any Conqueror's Hockey users clash, whereas this is what it looks like when you have an advanced Conqueror's Hockey clash. So this begs the question, who else will be confirmed as an advanced Conqueror's Hockey user by the end of the series? Well, before we get into it, make sure to subscribe for more One Piece videos every week. And even though we're talking about Conqueror's Hockey, you can improve your observation hockey with GlassesUSA.com, the sponsor for this video. As you can see, today I'm wearing a very stylish pair of glasses. Where did I get these? Did I go to the eye doctor's office to buy new glasses? No, I did not even have to leave my home. I literally just went to GlassesUSA.com and had over 9,000 options available to me prescription glasses that could be easily delivered straight to my apartment at way cheaper cost than retail prices. You can save literally up to 70% by just ordering straight from glassesusa.com. Prices are as low as $30 for your frames. And these are high quality frames with lenses made in state-of-the-art labs. They can handle any type of prescription and can incorporate any of your personalized needs. And I bet some of you are thinking you're too cool to wear glasses. Well, how about some high quality, sunglasses delivered straight to you at a fraction of the price. Every single style and color you can think of, and they have every designer brand, Armani, Gucci, Oakley, I got myself some Ray-Bans, and you can even get your sunglasses with prescription frames. So if you've been needing new eyeglasses or if you want some cool sunglasses, then don't bother going to a doctor's office or a store. Just get them now from glassesusa.com. The link is in the description below. So beyond that, first of all, I don't believe that just anyone can get advanced Conqueror's Hockey. There have been plenty of jokes about how just about everybody is getting it, but I think the actual criteria for being able to attain advanced Conqueror's Hockey is very, very specific. As far as we are told, advanced Conqueror's Hockey works the same way as advanced armament hockey, you are letting the hockey flow out of you offensively, but instead of using armament, you are instead infusing the attack with conquerors. At least that's how it sounds like it works based on the way that Luffy awakened it. Luffy first thinks back to Hyogoro's explanation of advanced armament, what we call Ryo, and the fact that Ryo works by letting armament hockey flow out of you. Then Luffy realizes that doing this with armament is not strong enough, but that it can be done with conquerors hockey instead, for a more potent effect. As such, Advanced Conquerors is simply the process of letting hockey flow out of you offensively, but you are now letting Conquerors hockey flow out instead of armament. That's why Advanced Conquerors and Advanced Armament have the same effect of damaging the opponent without physically touching them. But Conquerors hockey is so much more potent that it makes for a much bigger visual effect, whereas advanced armament hockey will still usually look like the attack is making contact. So based on this realization by Luffy and how he achieved advanced conquerors hockey, it sounds as though those who have advanced conquerors hockey would need to check off three criteria. First, they would obviously need to have conquerors hockey. Second, they would need to know how to use Ryo or advanced armament because they would need to master the skill of letting hockey flow out of you offensively. And third, they would need to apply the Ryo technique of letting hockey flow out offensively to their conqueror's hockey. Essentially, they need that third piece, that epiphany that Luffy has, 
where he realizes that he can do the same thing he's been doing with armament hockey, but with conquerors hockey instead. That sounds like the recipe for advanced conquerors, as far as we know. It does seem to fit with the characters we know of so far, who we have seen develop advanced conquerors hockey over the course of the story. Luffy for one, obviously, but also Odin, Zoro, and Yamato. So think about Odin's progression of strength, as far as we were shown. We know that he always knew Ryo as he taught the scabbards, but it seems he did not know advanced conquerors at the time that he met Roger, as he was surprised to see that Roger and Whitebeard weren't touching, whereas Odin and Whitebeard's previous clash did have contact. We knew that by the time Odin returned to Wano, he had become stronger. And we know that Odin was able to actually scar Kaido, which has been suggested to only be possible with Advanced Conqueror's Haki. As a reminder, that's why we have the repeated language of Advanced Armament alone being too shallow against Kaido. That's why the Scabbards couldn't scar Kaido and why Luffy couldn't deal real damage against Kaido initially. As such, that suggests that Odin's progression went something like this. At the time that he left Wano, Odin already had Conqueror's Haki and he already knew Ryo. Seeing Roger and Whitebeard's clash was possibly the first time that he observed Advanced Conqueror's hockey. Then he joined Roger, and at some point in his journey with Roger, he became strong enough that he was able to take that final third step of combining the technique of Ryo with Conqueror's hockey, which is why by the time Odin returned to Wano, he was strong enough to scar Kaido with Advanced Conqueror's hockey. Yes, there's a lot of speculation as to the specific steps of him in the timeline, but I do think it makes sense from what we know of Odin's journey and what we know it takes to damage Kaido, and it's consistent with Luffy's route to learning Advanced Conquerors. You start with just Conquerors and Ryo, then at some point you put them together, which makes you strong enough to be able to even severely damage someone like Kaido. Similarly, we can look at Zoro. Zoro is a bit of a weirder case, as a lot of points where Zoro attains certain hockey abilities are not clear throughout the series, but it does almost sound as though when Zoro learned to cut steel all the way back in Alabasta, he was already accidentally using Ryo. And the simple fact that Zoro was able to cut Kaido on the roof even prior to Ashura does suggest that Zoro was actively using Ryo at that point post time skip. As such, Zoro's later moments of using advanced Conqueror's Haki, such as this Ashura moment, which while a bit unclear, seems to be implied to have been advanced Conqueror's Haki being unintentionally used by Zoro, and then this more explicit moment where Zoro just gets advanced Conqueror's Haki consciously mastered through the same method as Luffy, just letting Conqueror's Haki flow out of you. All this also suggests the same sort of recipe for advanced Conquerors. You need to be a Conqueror yourself, you need to have the skill of letting hockey flow out of you, which is Ryo, commonly done with armament hockey. And then finally, you have this moment of awakening where you put two and two together and master the skill of letting Conqueror's hockey flow out of you. Yamato is the last character that we got to see develop advanced Conqueror's hockey, but we also know too little about her in general to really track her development of it. At the very least, we know that she was a Conqueror as a child, and it did seem likely from her early initial combat showings that she had advanced armament, you know, she had Ryo down. So this moment against Kaido where she awakens advanced Conqueror's Haki does at least fit the mold of what makes sense. So all that being said, understanding those criteria for Conqueror's Haki, the club of people who actually possibly have advanced Conqueror's Haki in the world right now, or the people who could conceivably get it by the end of the story, is actually much smaller than you might think. Here's what I got and definitely make your arguments below for who you think makes sense. So easy picks first. I think Dragon is a very, very easy pick. First piece of criteria, do we think he has normal Conqueror's Haki? Well, he's the man who stands against the world government itself, the leader of the revolutionary army. As such, it is very likely that he has an extremely powerful will. Ivankov said that Luffy's will reminded her of Dragon. So as such, I would expect Dragon to be basically a guaranteed Conqueror's Haki user. It is also extremely, extremely likely that Dragon has Ryo, as we know that Sabo has Ryo. Sabo's Dragon Breath attack is probably the first extremely clear, prominent use of advanced armament hockey to flow out and destroy something from the inside. It fits Hyogoro's description to a T. It is basically like a much larger version of what Luffy does to this tree. And considering Sabo is Dragon's protege, it is hard to imagine Dragon himself not having Ryo. As such, Dragon, you know, a Conqueror's Hockey user who is likely extremely skilled at Ryo, I think Dragon is very, very likely to have advanced Conqueror's Hockey. Next, another easy pick, Rayleigh. Now, I don't think Rayleigh necessarily can use advanced Conqueror's 
at this point in time, I don't think he was able to use it when he fought Kizaru. After all, Rayleigh had not even used a sword in decades. However, in his prime, I think Rayleigh was most certainly an advanced Conqueror's Hockey user. Rayleigh has the two necessary pieces. He has Conqueror's Hockey, and he is an absolute expert in Ryo. As we saw, he was casually showcasing both levels of Ryo multiple times pre-time skip, with the destruction of the collar and the blocking of the elephant. Is it likely Rayleigh was able to put both pieces together for advanced Conqueror's Hockey? I think in his prime, that is very, very likely, considering Zoro can already do it, and as such, I would expect the first mate of the original Pirate King in his prime to have been capable of it as well. For similar reasons, really the Zoro reason, I think we can expect Mihawk to have advanced Conqueror's Hockey. After all, it would be kind of embarrassing if Zoro and Mihawk are having their final duel, and Mihawk has trouble even properly clashing swords with Zoro. However, if you want more concrete reasons, we know that Mihawk has a black blade, and as such Mihawk can be assumed to be an extremely, extremely masterful armament hockey user. Achieving a black blade is something that not even Odin could accomplish. There is no reason to think that Mihawk cannot use Ryo. And while years ago there were doubts as to whether Mihawk had Conqueror's Hockey, at this point it would make no sense for him not to have it considering King and Zoro's interaction seems to heavily imply that it is only natural that someone who is aiming to become the world's strongest swordsman would have Conqueror's Hockey, as you are essentially aiming to be the king of swordsmen, to stand above all other swordsmen. So we got the easy ones out of the way. Now we have the controversial possibilities. In the Marines, okay, what do we think about the Admirals? What do we think about Garp? What do we think about Sengoku? Note that as I said in the beginning, I do not think you need advanced conquerors to be one of the strongest in the world. I think every single admiral could possibly not have advanced conquerors hockey and still be extremely strong. Just as a reminder, admirals have showcased strong hints of having both future sight and extremely advanced armament hockey. Their ability to mysteriously be uninjured by hockey attacks is written in exactly the same manner as how Katakuri uses his ability, using Future Sight, to morph one's body to avoid even hockey attacks. And the large invisible barrier they create seems to be the first level of armament hockey that Yogoro explained, the same thing that Luffy attempts to use when trying to stop Big Mom. As such, the Admirals are likely top-tier users of observation and armament hockey, and they have ridiculously powerful devil fruits to top it off. I do not think it is the end of the world if the admirals do not have advanced conquerors hockey. Even just looking at Kid and Law versus Big Mom, we see that powerful fruits are always going to be effective. So that huge caveat aside, do I think that the admirals have conquerors hockey and advanced conquerors hockey? I personally don't think the admirals are the types to have conquerors or have ever been hinted to have conquerors. I just think it is inherently less likely that those who choose the conformist path of the marines are going to have conquerors hockey compared to those who try to climb to the top of the world as we see among pirates. Having the disposition of a king is not about raw combat strength, but rather one's nature. Now, at the same time, at the very least, Sengoku does have conquerors hockey, according to Vivre cards even though I hate referencing Vivre cards, as far as we know, Sengoku has it. So perhaps Oda is willing to write in Conqueror's Haki specifically for the leader of the Marines? So maybe, maybe it's possible that Akainu specifically is a latent Conqueror's Haki user as well, simply because of his role in the story, and of course his clearly extraordinarily strong will. I'll just leave it at this. In my opinion, the Admirals in general are unlikely to have conquerors at all, let alone the advanced version, but I think it's entirely possible Sengoku was at some point an advanced conquerors hockey user, especially with the respect that even Roger gives him, and I think it's entirely possible that someone like Akainu may be a latent conquerors hockey user, which would inevitably lead to him becoming an advanced conquerors hockey user down the line later in the story. I mean, for all we know, maybe he even awakened it during his battle with Awakiji. If Oda ever wanted to write in a hockey bloom for Akainu, I think that this 10-day battle with another admiral is the most natural setup you could ask for. However, that's, all, that's very speculative, right? I think Akainu is an enigma at the moment. Sengoku was likely an advanced Conqueror's hockey user at one point, and the rest of the admirals, in my opinion, are unlikely 
but of course I could be totally wrong about them. Now, lastly, kid. Oh, kid, what is to be done with this boy? Look, I still believe Oda has great things planned for Kid, and he's clearly set up as a rival for Luffy, but man, does he seem a long way away from something like Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. I mean, Kid doesn't even have advanced armament. He doesn't have Ryo. That's why Kid was literally unable to damage Kaido whatsoever on the rooftop. He has to resort to trying to crush Kaido with force because Kid cannot get past his scales. Even the scabbards, who are far weaker than Kid overall, were at least able to damage Kaido thanks to knowing Ryo. But Kid doesn't even have that. Not knowing Ryo makes it seem like Advanced Conqueror's Hockey is just way out of Kid's league at the moment, as Kid does not even yet have the basic concept down of letting Hockey flow out of you offensively. Remember, just getting basic Ryo down is something that took Luffy weeks of training to learn. He needed that foundation first before he could start using advanced conquerors. Now, it is entirely possible if Oda wants to, you know, he can do whatever he wants. He can make Kid just skip straight ahead to getting advanced conquerors hockey, though I feel that would kind of invalidate Luffy's process of getting there, not to mention the fact that, you know, advanced conquerors hockey is an obscenely powerful jump in ability that felt pretty extreme even for Luffy when Luffy first got it, despite the weeks of training he did to learn Ryo before it. So for Kid to kind of just, just skip ahead to the finish line without any time spent on the basics would be pretty crazy. If Kid were to get it during the Big Mom fight, maybe it could work if it were accompanied by some backstory of Kid working on the basics of Ryo on the side, so that even if Kid didn't necessarily have Ryo ready by the time he fought Kaido, there was still that groundwork there for him to then maybe have a big breakthrough and, and master letting hockey flow out as well as advanced conquerors hockey flow out all at once against Big Mom, and then he just begins using Advanced Conquerors Hockey. I don't know, at the same time, maybe Kid doesn't get Advanced Conquerors against Big Mom, maybe it's later in the story, or maybe he never gets it at all. I just think Kid is a weird case where it really feels like he makes sense as a character that would get it at some point, but he just seems so far off. But let me know what you think about each of these candidates in the comments below. That's pretty much all I've got on my list. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And if you've been needing new eyeglasses, or if you want some cool sunglasses, then don't bother going to a doctor's office or a store. Just get them now from glassesusa.com. The link is in the description below.